This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry has, as usual, been given to three people, but one person has won half the Nobel Prize and the other two share the other half. The Nobel Prize is based upon the idea of exploiting evolution in bacteria, in other biological systems to make chemicals, to make pharmaceuticals that would be very difficult to make in other ways. Half of it went to this fantastic researcher called Frances Arnold. She's in Caltech in California and uh, has been a major success for the community of enzymology and biocatalysis. And the other half was split between uh, George Smith and Sir Gregory Winter. They were awarded the prize for the development of a technique called phage display. I only know really something about one half of the Nobel Prize. That's the one won by Frances Arnold. Her main thing is the um, development of techniques that are, have been applied to enzymes to change their capacity, their properties and, and their qualities. To find ways of changing enzymes, the natural catalysts that catalyze most of the processes in our bodies and in all living organisms, how to change those enzymes so that they will do chemical reactions that we would really like to be done. For example, for making biofuels, for making other chemicals that we need. And then she has screening methods to see which of the mutants that she's generated will survive the new condition that she's put in the enzyme through. They take DNA in a gene which makes an enzyme that sort of does the reaction you want and randomly mutate the DNA so that it makes changes and makes a slightly different enzyme. So you get lots and lots of different enzymes from one set of mutations and then you try all of those enzymes for the reaction you want. Her major expertise is with this enzyme called Cytochrome P450, an oxidative type of enzyme, a heme-based enzyme that she can manipulate with a, an ease and an elegance that is, uh, is really impressive. And you select the enzyme or few enzymes that do the reaction a bit better than the natural one. She can grow them in the lab, she can manipulate the DNA very efficiently, and then she screens for variants that she um, is interested in because they're doing the reaction that she's, she's after. And then you go round and round and round. Each time, choose the best enzymes that you produce. And after a few generations, you can produce an enzyme that does the reaction you want very, very much better. I see chemists with all these amazing machinery and labs and all these things you do. And yet it seems like in the end, a lot of the time, you just use nature to do what you want to do. Like this, nature's still the best at it. Absolutely, that's exactly actually one of France's definition, that is, uh, nature is the best chemist. The point is that bacteria can make these enzymes very easily, their generations rotate very quickly, and once you've got the enzyme identified, the modified one that can do it, it is then very easy to produce it in large amounts. Well, certainly I thought she would have, she was very close to getting the Nobel Prize because of all this innovation. She's also an excellent person, like her. she's a lovely person. She has quite a nice, quite, has evolved quite vigorously, I would say, in her career. She's a woman and she's an engineer. And uh, so I think she was the first professor in uh, engineering in Caltech. And she's a really impressive example of somebody who is both a scientist and engineer, who is combining engineering principles and scientific principles to do something that's never been done before. There are fewer females in science, unfortunately. This is something we are really trying to change. Um, and the community is becoming very attentive to, to this situation as well. So the fact that she was a woman was amazing. But the fact that she was a woman in my field of research, that was really what made it for me, you know. So it was a great recognition, a great boost to the field. and. Um, maybe also sparking attentions from other scientists in uh, uh, peripheral fields to enzyme engineering that I now become interested. So yes, being a female was amazing. And then uh, combine that one with that research, can't be any better. She's the only, the fifth woman to ever to win the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And I'm pleased to say that two of those women have won the Nobel Prize 
during the time we've been making periodic videos. How did you find out that she'd won the Nobel Prize? Where were you? What were you doing? I was doing a, a PhD Viva and I got a text message from one of my former PhD students. I said, you know, Francis Arnold did it. And I was in the Viva. I couldn't really do anything other than checking on my, you know, iWatch and I was like, God, I really, I, really need, I really need to check this out. And I had to finish until, you know, wait until the end of the Viva. They exploited a virus. I've got a little model here, my, my empty bottle and uh, pipe cleaner. So they, they um, exploited a virus called a bacteriophage. And it's a very simple biological uh, structure. And it's composed of protein coat, which is represented by the bottle, uh, which is many different proteins that are assembled together into this what's called a capsid. Internal to this capsid is um, a strand of DNA, so genetic material that um, codes for the individual proteins of the coat. It has the ability to, and the information encoded within it, to replicate itself. But it can't do that on its own, it has to, ha has to do this with bacteria. And so the bacteriophage can infect bacteria with its DNA. Uh, and the bacteria uh, is forced to use its cellular machinery to, to read and decode the DNA and produce all of the proteins that are involved in the, in the coat. And so within the bacteria, the, the protein coat forms around the, the viral DNA and then the bacteriophage break out of the, the bacteria and then can scuttle off and, and then infect more bacteria and that's their life cycle. That's all it does. It goes, goes into the bacteria and then the bacteria doesn't just make one copy of the, of the capsid, it, it just keeps going, it keeps making them until they burst out. So from, I don't know how many uh, bacteriophage are made from, from one piece of DNA, but it's, it's many. So it, all it does is, is reproduce and then kill the bacteria. That's its job. It's, it doesn't seem like a nice dude. No, it's not. Viruses are not <laughs> particularly friendly. So George Smith, one of the recipients, so he was the first to exploit the, the relationship between the bacteriophage and the bacteria. And, and so he forced the bacteria to make a bacteriophage which, which had um, a protein of interest, a different protein attached to the top of the protein coat to the capsid. So I've got my little, my little bespoke protein here. He did this by inserting uh, a gene, so the DNA that codes for this specific protein. And so when the bacteria read and decode this DNA, they'll produce all of the proteins that make up um, the, the capsid, but they'll, they'll also produce uh, this new bespoke protein. Uh, and so the gene for this protein is inserted into another gene within the viral DNA. So he's produced a bacteriophage that, that displays this bespoke uh, a protein at the top. He was forcing the bacteria to express bacteriophage with small fragments of proteins at the top. And these fragments are antigenic, which means uh, they can be recognized by the immune system. And so um, if we have an infection, we get an immune response in our body, and the body produces larger proteins called um, antibodies. And these can be engineered by our body to bind to uh, pretty much any protein sequence. And so these little fragments can be recognized by antibodies. And so he can use um, this structure now, so he can take a known antibody which will bind to this peptide and he can then fish this whole bacteriophage, bacteriophage out of solution. The reason for this is that what, what makes this um, uh, a fantastic technique is he's now plucked out uh, the peptide that binds to the uh, antibody, but he also has, importantly, the genetic information that codes for this peptide. So he can then see what peptide is produced, what protein is produced um, from a certain gene and, and, and also which peptide or protein binds to the antibody. And in fact, the, where the sort of healthcare aspect really comes in is with uh, Sir Gregory Winter who took this technology further. And so we just talked about antibodies. He inserted genes that code for antibodies into the, the phage DNA. And so he, the bacteria would produce the bacteriophage with antibodies attached to the surface, attached to the capsid. Okay, so once you've formed your, your bacteriophage with your, your antibody there, that's fantastic that you can, you can produce that. But the, one of the really genius aspects of this research is the ability to produce billions of different antibodies on top of these phages. And, and this is done by uh, making small mutations of the gene that codes for the antibody that's been inserted into the bacteriophage. And so this is actually quite easily done. And so a gene is a small section of DNA uh, which is made up as a polymer, which is made up of many subunits called nucleotides. And so you may have uh, a few thousand or many thousand nucleotides in one gene. And so this sequence of nucleotides is very specific and it codes for a very specific protein. And so just by making very small changes in the sequence, 
you're mutating that sequence and, and then you make very small changes in the protein that it codes for. Okay, so you can make all of these, you can mutate the DNA and in one pot have many, like many billions of different mutated sequences because there are so many nucleotides by making small changes. So for instance, you could, you could um, develop an antibody that binds to a specific target protein. So let's say if you had a protein that was on the surface of a cancer cell that you wanted to bind an antibody to, um, what uh, Greg Winter did was immobilize that target protein on a solid surface. So what you can do is you can uh, wash all of the many uh, billions of phage with the different antibodies uh, across the, the solid support. Uh, they'll bind to the target protein and they'll be retained and all the other um, bacteriophage will be uh, washed away. And then you can isolate the, the ones that bind and you don't need to analyze the protein material because you have the genetic instructions already within the capsid. Uh, so you can take that DNA and you can, um, uh, you can produce uh, many more of this particular phage. And then if you repeat the process a number of times, what you're left with is only the few antibodies that bind incredibly strongly, have a very high affinity with the target protein. And these are the proteins uh, that make the best, the most effective uh, drugs. Hi, thanks for watching. We've done lots of other videos about Nobel Prizes, previous winners, or just interesting stuff about the prize in general. If you'd like to check out a playlist of videos, there should be a link on the screen right now, or have a quick look down in the video description.